the sins and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, go back to the night and give him thanks for it right now. Uh, give him thanks for the very first time you ever felt the presence of God. Uh, Why don't we stand to our feet all over this house? The presence of the Lord is here. Uh, there's faith in this house. You've already called your request out to God in prayer and made your petitions known before Him. Uh, now let's thank Him because the answer is on the way. Uh, the healing. I said the answer is on the way. Uh, the healing is on its way. Uh, the promise is coming on now its way. Uh, I thank you for every need we have called out to heaven on behalf of tonight. Uh, I thank you, God, because you have heard our prayer and you are answering. Uh, you hold us in the palm of your hand. Uh, there are miracles in this house tonight. Uh, there is deliverance in this house tonight. Uh, there is an outpouring of your blessings in this house tonight. Uh, and we give you glory and honor and praise in the name of Jesus. Uh, go ahead and clap your hands unto the Lord all over this house. Uh, I love you, Jesus. I bless you and I praise you. Uh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I do want to make you aware of one very special need. I received a phone call this morning from Brother Floyd Hinton. They used to go here until life challenges hit them and they had to be closer to their kids. Sister Hinton has suffered a stroke. She'd been recovering from that. He let me know that she is in the hospital. The doctors have laid out three options for them. None of them look very good at all. They say it's just a matter of time before she passes probably, especially if she has another stroke. And the family is fine with the will of God being done. We still believe God is able to do miracles, but the greatest miracles for this mortal to put on immortality. And so we're going to pray that the hand of God would be on that family. The hand of God be upon this church family, very dear lady to my wife and I, that the peace of God would carry them and help them and guide them during this time. Uh, would you call out Sister Hinton's name and the Hinton family right now in the name of Jesus? Uh, Father, you are the God of all peace, and I bless you and I worship your name. I'm praying for Sister Hinton right now. If it is your will, raise her up for a miracle for the glory of your name. God, if this is your time for her to go to her reward, she has lived for her eternal, eternal life. God, I pray that you would touch her. Help her. Let the suffering cease. Uh, strengthen Brother Hinton and Keith and all the family. Uh, let the hand of God be upon them in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray that the presence of God would go into that hospital room right now uh, and minister to her and minister to that family. Uh, and we give you thanks and praise and glory uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, and let the church say amen. I feel like opening this service with this passage of Scripture. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Would you lift your hands and bless the Lord in this house right now. Better is one day.
seated tonight so thankful to be in the house of the lord tonight to every guest that has joined us we welcome you would you give our guest a hand clap 
of welcome today. We're delighted you're worshiping God on a Wednesday night. No better way to spend your Wednesday night in the house of the Lord. Amen. Want to apprise you of our schedule this week and going into next week as well. Revival continues with Brother Muse tonight and Sunday. Are you thankful for that? Amen. Find someone that needs a touch from God. Bring them to the house of God. Teach them a Bible study. Bring them to the house of God. Let's see what God will do in their life on Sunday morning and Sunday night. For those that are interested and are available Thursday night and Friday night, Revival Crusade for this Phoenix Valley with Brother Mark Drost at the Pentecostals of Phoenix at 7.30 p.m. If you're able to make it, I encourage you to do so. Then mark your calendar next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Brother Campatella, I'm sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Brother Campatella will be with us on Wednesday night in the House of the Lord Revival Service. Thursday night training. If you're interested in revival, be here. We're going to get you out early. It's rare when I ask you to come on an off night, but I'm asking you to come on that night. It's going to be a very special time. And then Friday night, great big youth rally. We want the entire church to come and be a part of that. Saturday, this Saturday, is the food bank outreach at St. Mary's Food Bank. We're going to go and serve our community. You can see Brother Connor for information on that. All have transformed immediately after the altar service tonight. Meet Brother and Sister Felty in the fellowship hall. No, you're not having to set up tables and chairs. They need to go over just a few things with you in the fellowship hall tonight. Amen. It's so good to have my brother-in-law, Brother Michael Hanks, in the house of the Lord tonight. We're glad he's here. Worship the Lord on the way to New Mexico to minister this weekend. Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? We're going to worship the Lord in the giving of our tithes and offering. We're going to bless the man of God, Brother and Sister Muse, with a revival offering tonight. Come and give unto the Lord. Get out and greet one another in Jesus' name. Worship with the praise team tonight. Oh, man. 
in this house every hand lifted and every voice giving praise and glory to God right now I love you and I bless you oh there ought to be a roar of praise in this house Come on, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Help me create something right now. Come on. I love you, Jesus. Come on, lift your voice. Don't worry about who's beside you. Lift your voice to him right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, God. Go ahead, put your hands with it right now. With your voice lifted, give him praise. Come on, give him praise right now. We've got time. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Come on. I need some people to help me press through right now. Come on. 
Come on, let's turn this thing into a prayer room for a minute. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we dedicate this moment to you, God. We're asking for your presence to fall right now. Come on, I don't want to have church without him, God. I don't want to have a move of God without him. He's got to be here. Come on, he's got to inhabit this place. We block out every distraction, God. We push past every spirit of fatigue. Come on, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Come on. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let it marinate right now. Let it marinate right now. Let it fill this house. Come on. Come on, put off tomorrow. Put off today. Let right now become the focus point. Lord, block out every distraction right now, God. We need you to move in this house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What a honor it is tonight. For us all to be together once again, worshiping him, praising the one true and living God. To all the guests that are here tonight, we love you, we honor you, we thank you for being here with us. I give honor to Pastor and Sister Sansom. I love them so much and thank them for allowing me to be here once more. And again, Brother Hanks, I give you honor tonight. So glad you're here. We appreciate you. Um, First time meeting him Monday, and I'm just going to be real honest with y'all. I've never preached count meeting, but to have two pastors on the platform on Wednesday night is a pretty big deal for me. So, so I can't let this one mess me up. <laughs> bunch of pressure, bunch of pressure. So, First Samuel chapter 22, I give honor to my wife, my family. 1 Samuel 22, verse number 1, the Bible said, David departed, therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. And David went thence to Mizpah to Moab. And he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab. And they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold. Depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Harath. I want to preach to you for just a little while. This may feel like Sunday night before we're over with, I hope. It's time to leave the cave. It's time to leave the cave. Won't you lay your Bibles down, lift up your hands, lift up your voice all over this house and help me create an atmosphere right now. Come on. Lift your voice to him. Oh, God, would you anoint the remainder of this service? We thank you, Lord, for what you've already done, God. Would you come down in this place? Would you touch hearts and lives, God? Meet every need, God. Heal those that are sick. Save those, God, that are bound. God, give us the strength today. God, anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet that your words will become my words. In Jesus' name, why don't you clap your hands to him one more time all over this place and let him move right now. may be seated for a few minutes. In past years, the David that we will begin to preach about in our text has strangled a lion and killed a bear on his resume. It's evident in chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, just a few chapters before that he was sent into the battlefield 
well stood and took down a giant with one stone and then removed the head of Goliath. He then overcame 200 Philistines with one sword. And here we are just a few chapters later, and he is hiding in a cave. Can I tell you today that David is only one chapter removed from receiving the hallowed bread and the sword of Goliath in the tabernacle. But now he is seeking shelter from a cave called Adullam. Adullam is only five miles located from Bethlehem. And instead of being in Bethlehem, he's hiding out because he escaped to a cave. The truth is for every one of us tonight, Many of us, there is 1 Samuel 17 experiences in each and every one of our lives. There is times that we are willing to fight the giant and watch it fall to defeat and our battles be won on Sunday night experiences. But for each and every person under the sound of my voice, if it has not happened yet for you, it might do that pretty soon because there will come a 1 Samuel 22. When you are hiding out in a cave with no answers or validation that you are even worth anything in this life. You see and understand that caves never go higher, but caves will always go deeper. Understand very quickly that David had a reason for being in the cave and maybe even David felt justified for where he was in the time. It's easy to figure out that David had his enemies and he had his reasons for being in a cave. I came to tell you today that we all sometimes are justified in hiding ourselves due to life situations and things that we come up against. It's real easy to find yourself to back off and hide instead of shout, is there not a call? when your life is at stake. It's in these moments that you realize that you will never, though, get out of your cave as long as you talk to those that are discontented and distressed or in debt. Can I tell you today, the enemy will always send somebody else that's in the same predicament you are to settle with you and stand in your cave with you. It's evident that in this that David was surrounded and was isolated even though that there was people around him. But thank God that David realized if I'm going to get out of where I am and if my circumstance is going to change, I've got to lift up my voice and begin to talk to God. Sometimes you got to realize if I'm going to get out of where I am, I've got to be willing to do something different. Can I tell you today, the people that attach themselves to you are not the answer in your dilemma and in your trial. But you've got to make up in your mind, I'm going to call on the one that can hear my cry. I'm going to call on the one that can respond to me. So if you go through Psalms, you'll begin to find the prayer that David prayed in Psalms 142. And one, the Bible is telling you like this, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed him before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path in the way wherein I walked, that they may have privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld there was no man that would know me. My refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, and said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Listen to this. Attend unto my cry. 
for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring me my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Understand today, before he closed that prayer out, he said it like this. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. Can I tell you today that David was asking for a way out of the cave, not for his benefit, but that God would receive the glory. Something happens in the atmosphere when you begin to praise him, not for your benefit, but that he could bring glory and he could be exalted. I'm telling you today, if God has ever healed you, it's that he can have glory. If God has ever saved you, it's that he can have glory. If he's ever raised you up and brought you out, it's that his spirit can be glorified. Come on, you ought to clap your hands right now for everything that he's done for you in the past. Come on, has he ever saved you? Has he ever set you free? Has he ever brought you out? Come on, I know it's Wednesday, but I should be dead. I know it's just midweek, but I should be in jail. I shouldn't even be here right now. But God, but God, but God, but God, my family gave up on me. But God, my friends gave up on me. But God. I wish I had some more men that would run right now. I wish I had some more men that would help me right now. Come on, we got to create something dynamic in this place today. We can't operate in routine. We've got to operate in the miraculous right now. Come on, come on, come on. We got to have the Holy Ghost to fall. We got to have the Holy Ghost to Can I preach to you today? It's not the will of God, David, that you're in a cave. When Elisha was living in 1 Kings 19, there had just been a 1 Kings 18 where Elijah had mocked and slew the prophets of Baal and had quoted these famous words, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And the next chapter, He's in a cave. But this is what it says in 1 Kings 19. The word of the Lord came to him in a cave and said this, What doest thou here? I believe that's the question that maybe God is proposing even tonight to some of you. What doest thou here? You was created for greatness. You was created for ministry. You was created for anointing. There's no reason that you should be in the cave. You see, we use caves as a means of protection. We use caves as a means for validation that in the moment it feels like you understand that David, that was not David's original plan and his original journey. You can, you can find that evident because the Bible says he escaped into the cave. That means immediately. That means without pause. That means suddenly he went to a dwelling place. But thank God for a preacher that showed up and looked him in the face and said, David, abide not. Abide not in the hold. He told him, he said, depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Can I tell somebody today, the best way to get out of your praise and the best direction you can take is when you go into praise.
I know it's Wednesday, but I'm going to preach it like it's Sunday. I'm telling you today, you got to get out of the cave and get your praise back. You got to get out of the cave and get your worship back. You're not meant to dwell here, David. You'll die here. You got to get your praise. Come on, let's give him a head clap right now all over this place. You got to come out tonight. You can't afford to wait till Sunday. You've got to come out tonight. You see, a valley is something that you go through, but a cave is something that you'll die in. I've seen so many people get mixed up between caves and valleys. They feel like they're going through it, but really they're dying where they are. Because here's the deal between caves and valleys. Even valleys get sunlight. Why do you need the sun? You need your vitamin D. Because your vitamin D is what builds your immune system. That keeps you healthy and keeps you at, 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 at bay, I guess, or, or at, 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 at protection against the things that would come against you. But you see, a cave, a cave, the further you go in, the darker it gets. The further you go in, the less oxygen you'll begin to accumulate. The further you go in, the more drier it'll get. And the more dead things you'll find. Ooh. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. It's not a valley you're in. It's you're in a cave. I'm not coming to try to up, up, up come against you and make you feel uncomfortable today. But hear this evangelist. You've got to shake yourself, David. You've got to realize I'm not going to get through this unless I come back out of this. I'm telling somebody today, you turns is legal. It's okay to turn around and go back out the way you was and say, I made a mistake. I wasn't supposed to be here in the first place. I've got to get out from this place. I've got to turn around and go back to Judah. Because the Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't say nothing about if I'm in a cave, he's with me. If your worship's been affected, you might just be in a cave. Valleys are something we walk through. But, but caves is something we die in. You could come through a valley with a testimony, but you'll come out in a funeral with a cave. But the Bible will tell it to you like this. After David has came out in 2 Samuel 2 and 1, it says it like this. And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go? And he said unto Hebron. So David went up thither, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelite, and Abigail Nabal's wife the Carmelite, and his men that were with him did David bring up. See, here's what you don't understand. When you come out of the cave, somebody else is going. The reason the devil is trying to keep you bound and keep you back and keep you discontented is because he knows when you make up in your mind, I'm coming out. There's going to be another brother or another sister or there will be people around you that when you come out, they'll follow you out. When you start worshiping, they'll start worshiping. When you start running, they'll start running. That's what brings revival. That's what brings ignition. That what brings the spark. Come on, you ought to praise him right now until your brother starts praising. You ought to worship him right now until your sister starts. Go ahead, Peyton. Go ahead, buddy. Run until somebody else runs. We're... Come on, somebody. We got to come out of the cave. We're
Come on, there's going to be some testimonies that walk out of this room. I once was bound, but now I'm free. I once was blind, but now I can see. I once was in debt. I once was discontented. I once was in distress, but God, let me go to Judah. But God, let me praise him again. But God, let me come out. Because here's what they done in 2 Samuel. The Bible says they anointed him king over the house of Judah. The anointing comes. You see what it feels better in here right now? Just personally, it feels way better in here right now. You want to know why? It's because praise brought the anointing. If the devil can ever stop the praise, we don't have no anointing. But if we can ever praise through what we're feeling and what we're going through and what we're dealing with, the anointing will fall and the anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing breaks the... The anointing will free you and nothing else will. But it all starts when you go into praise. Let's all lift our heads right now all over this place. Come on, I'm leaving with freedom. I'm leaving with freedom. I'm leaving with my breakthrough. I'm leaving with my breakthrough. You see, here's the deal. Depression is a cave. Sexual tendencies and insecurities is a cave. Distress and anxiety is a cave. We're all guilty. I'm preaching from the pulpit to the back door. We all can find ourselves. I'm not preaching to just sinners or I'm preaching to everybody right now. We're all guilty. But the fact of the matter is, it's not maybe that you went in the cave, but it's the fact how long you stay in the cave. Because the Bible says it like this in Psalms 41, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. And verse 2, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Psalms 98 1 says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. How can David go on and on and on and on through Psalms about praise? I can tell you how. Because life circumstance after life circumstance drove him to his knees. But David realized every time I come out, it's going to be because I renewed my praise in him. It's going to be because I just kept dancing. It didn't matter if I didn't feel good. It didn't matter if it wasn't all okay. I just kept praising him. Musicians, come help me, please. The deal about it is, if you can get praise into your song, things will change around. Here's a few things that I begin to study that praise Him. The Bible tells us that heaven praises Him. His angels praise Him. All of His hosts praise Him. The sun and the moon praise Him. The stars of light praise Him. 
The heavens of heavens praise him. The waters that are above the heavens praise him. Fire, hell, snow, and vapor praises him. The stormy wind that fulfills his word praises him. The mountains praise him. The beasts praise him. The cattle praise him. The creeping things praise him. The flying fowl praise him. The kings of the earth will praise him. And his people will praise him. Can I tell you today, it's time you grab a new song. You've sung the song of distress long enough. You've sung the song of failure long enough. I don't care if you failed God. Just repent and get back up again and sing another song. Understand today that every once in a while, You just got to start singing. He's my all in all. He's my bright and morning star. He's my way maker. He's the lily of the valley. He's my mountain mover. It's all in him. Whatever you think you need to sing, it don't matter if you're going down the road. You ought to just lift up your voice and begin to give God praise. And I'm telling you, you'll come out, David, when you get your praise back. You'll come out, David, when you get your praise. Let's all stand right now. I'm preaching to people right now that sickness has drove you into caves. Hurt has drove you into caves. Family circumstances have drove you into caves. Life problems, addictions, all of these things have drove you into a cave. But understand today, you can't come out. You need to make up in your mind that where I'm at is a temporary dwelling place. I'm coming out of my cave. I'm sorry it's not very deep tonight, but it's all you need to get yourself into victory. You can sleep tonight. You can have joy tomorrow. You can leave here with a testimony when you find prayer. This ain't in my notes, but I'm finna go country right now. And you may know this story, but oh, it's so good. It says the old farmer was plowing up his field. And his mule that he had used for years and years died, Brother Vanderhoff, right in the middle of the field. Or fell over. I'm sorry, he didn't die. God, Lord, we all lied. He fell over. You can tell this ain't in my notes. I can't get the story right. But the mule falls over. And the farmer made up in his mind he couldn't get the mule to get up. He said, I'm going to go buy a new mule. He said, I'm going to dig a hole. I need a new well anyway. And he said, I'm going to throw this mule in the, in the, hole, in the hole of the old well. And he said, I'm, the, the dirt I use for the new well, I'm going to bury the old well and bury the mule with it. And he said, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have two with one and so he called his friends and he took the mule and he drug it over to the hole of the old well and he threw that old mule in the hole and he went over there and he dug him a new well and all the dirt out of the new well he made his way back over to that old well and he started throwing dirt in the hole where that old well or that old mule was and it seemed like the more dirt that he threw in the hole something woke up in the old mule and the mule stood up in the bottom of the hole And he realized, if I don't start moving, this is fixing to bury me. If I don't start doing something, this thing is going to get up my legs where I can't move anymore. 
And so he made up in his mind that every time they threw a clump of dirt in the hole, he would stomp his feet. And he would pat it down under the dirt. And he would step up. Some of y'all know this story. It's okay. It's working right now. You see, here's the deal. This is what I feel in the Holy Ghost. This is no rebuke. I'm just telling you how far maybe we've gotten. Some of y'all are knee deep in this thing. You need to start stepping. Because sooner or later, the more dirt they begin to put in the hole, the more he begins to step up. You see what the devil don't realize a lot of times with a praiser is the more stuff he puts on you is the more stuff that'll bring you up. Because as long as you just keep praising, everything that comes, it goes under your feet. So it finally came the day that they had poured all the dirt in and the old mule had stomped his way up till he was completely out of the hole. When the farmer thought he was no good anymore, when everybody else thought like it was over with and it was dead, the mule, only the mule made up his mind, I can get out of this if I just won't stop moving. Things that happen to you in life, it hurts you. My God, have mercy. When things break, it slows you down. But if you ever noticed anybody that has surgery, it ain't but a day or two after surgery, Brother Darian, and they're making you get out of the bed. Because you've got to learn how to move. Because they know the longer you lay in that condition, the more stove up you'll get. The quicker you move, the better the recovery. I'm telling somebody today, you got to make up in your mind, I'm moving. I'm not staying here no longer. I can't dwell here no longer. i got to move. You want to get out of your seat right now. And make your way to the front and just give God praise. I don't have no special desire for you other than that you praise God and you give him glory. Not because you're worthy, but because he deserves it. I'm telling you today, you can come out. You can come out. You can come out when you praise him. You can be free when you praise him. You can...
somebody and pray with them right now. Find somebody and worship with them right now. Come on, we got to come out. We got to come out. Come on, help somebody come out of the cave. Help somebody come out of their sickness. Help somebody come out of their dilemma. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it, young people. That's it, young people. Yeah, yeah, da 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 Come out, come out, come out, come out. I'm leaving with victory. I'm leaving with victory. I'm leaving with victory. Come on. Yeah, yeah, da 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 Tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. Come on, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah, da 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 Come on, get loose in the Holy Ghost. Get loose in the Holy Ghost. Let God do a work right now. I'm talking to the saints and the members of PRC. I thank God for your response to the preaching of the word of the Lord tonight. But there's some of you, you've been in your cave too long. I could go out and grab you by the hand and pull you up here. And you've responded to the same place you always respond. You're in your comfort zone in the cave. It's time to get out of the cave. 
And so I'm going to make this comfortable for everybody. I'm not going to pull you by hand. I want the saints at PRC and the members uh, squeeze in from the aisles, uh, squeeze in from the sides. Uh, I want you to get in this middle section, uh, and I want you to begin to praise God until you feel yourself getting out of that cave. Uh, squeeze on in in front here. Come on. Uh, you, you're showing up in the same place you're always at, uh, doing the same little thing, and nothing's changing. Uh, you need to take some steps of faith uh, and praise Him like they're coming out now. Uh, get out of those insecurity. Get out of those fears in the name of Jesus. Uh, go ahead. Uh, let's go to Judah. touching you. Rejoice! Jumper, you ought to try jumping. Get out of your comfort zone.
Come on, if you're coming out, you ought to shout hallelujah right now. Come on, come on, come on. The enemy ought to hear you. You ought to lift up your voice and give him praise. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in authority. I'm walking in dominion. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. You ought to shout, 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 shout. 